John Peterson is one of the rare veterans in this book who grew up in Powasheek County. Until his retirement, he farmed north of Grinnell and in fact still helps his son on the family farm. As a teenager during World War II, Don's help was essential to the farm. As he tells it, And my draft number came up just before corn picking season. My dad said I had to stay home and I said I'm not going to. And he said you've got to, I can't get my crops in. And so I said, okay, just for deferment to get the crops in. And we got, he just got me a short deferment. As a result of the deferment, Don wasn't drafted until June 1944. He was stationed in Southampton, England, where his unit's papers were lost. An officer jokingly suggested that they just fake it and go up to London, and they'll never find you, and you can wait until the war is over. They didn't take that advice and their papers were found sending Don into battle in France, Belgium, Holland, and Germany. He was a radio operator in an advanced scout armored car. He summarized his war during the interview. We were constantly on the move. You were yeah. constantly on yeah. the move? We went, we, went across, we went through France and Belgium and Holland and crossed the Rhine at uh, just near Remagen, which was the crossing point, right. and then uh, we went out into Germany a ways and come back and fought in the Ruhr Pocket. And then we went over and we were northwest of Berlin when we made contact with the Russians up there, the first contact north of, the, north of Berlin. They'd nice. already made contact south of Berlin. And we drank vodka with the, with the Russian soldiers and drinking um, a toast to them with vodka and cheering on the Roosevelt and, and uh, Russian Stalin and the French, and then uh, Roosevelt had died by that time, uh -huh. and uh, so the Russians would would they'd say to Russia, and then they had wiped their eyes like they were crying, right. you know, because we couldn't speak the language. Right. And so we had a great time with them. In his fortnightly paper titled "The Good War," Don describes what it was like to live off the land in advance of the American forces sweeping across Germany after the Battle of the Bulge. Because we were always in front, we very seldom saw the kitchen. Okay. And uh, I understand from Homer Perry, uh, a chaplain, said that we weren't supposed to do that. But we, uh, I was a farm boy, and we went through, we were fighting through Germany in the rural area. And the first thing we'd do after we set up uh, controls was go in the hen house and, and uh, gather the eggs. I remember running in one hen house, and there was a German in there, <laughs> soldier, and he ducked behind the partition, and I went after him. By the time I got there, he'd escaped into the woods. But we always hunted the eggs, and we'd go up in the attic and get hams and bacons. And we'd go down in the basement and get potatoes. And they had canned food in the same jars that we had canned fruits and vegetables. And, and we ate. I learned to cook over there because, oh, uh, in fact, I was made a, a kind of unofficially a cook for, the, for our small little 15, 20 people because sure. we cooked our own meals. And one of the big things about it, we didn't have to do dishes when we got done. We just walked out of it and the German housewife had to clean up after us. Don was north of Berlin on VE Day, which he described in his interview. There? Well, I very much remember we were north of Berlin because we'd made contact with the Russians when we were sitting there. We knew the war was about over. And I remember one night waking up and boy, we heard gunfire all over every place. And I thought, oh, the damn Germans are attacking us. And somebody said, no, the war is over. We're celebrating. <laughs> Asked in the interview what was most memorable about his World War II service, Don responded. Well, I think most of the thing was that with your, the men that you were with, you became very close to them and tried to help them out. And uh, we see that happening in the war in uh, Iraq now and right. Afghanistan. Uh, you become very close to them and fight for their benefit. Mm -hmm. as well as your own, and are very cautious. Don's homecoming from the war was a bookend to his leaving, delayed by the harvest, as well as a contrast with the current homecomings of service personnel in Iraq. Yeah, and it's a little different than coming back now because they have big celebrations when they came home. I came home, got, off, got uh, mustered out in uh, Wisconsin, okay. went down and caught a train down to... Chicago and came into Grinnell and of course it was a two o'clock in the morning in middle of the night anyway right. and there was no taxis in Grinnell and uh, I threw my duffel bag over my shoulder and 
walked out to the farm, which is about three miles out, right. got out there and it was in the summertime, so I hollered up my folks. I knew they had the door locked and they couldn't, and they came down and Dad said, well, you're home, you don't need to get up and do chores in the morning, but <laughs> next morning I woke up when I get up and I went down and did chores and been a farmer that <laughs> started farming right away. Not the celebrations they have now. Don participated in a recent reunion of his World War II outfit. In fact, I went back last September for a, our family, I mean, our, our Army reunion, our little group, and the lieutenant who was in charge of our group mm -hmm. uh, became a captain, and one time some friends of ours from Grinnell went to visit him. I didn't know we were going to visit him because by that time he'd become commandant of West Point. And uh, then uh, he went on and was a four-star general in, in the Far East uh, with a four-star general. And we saw him last, I saw him last September. His son is General Petraeus, the head of the armed forces in uh, Iraq right now. Well, how interesting. So, so I kept track with him. A lifetime of farming has kept Don Peterson in good condition, which he proved at a recent panel discussion of veterans by fitting into his World War II uniform shirt.